This is a $1 Lego Star Wars minifigure. And this is a $70 Lego Star Wars minifigure. Despite these two being made around the same time with about the same amount of plastic in the exact same factory, one of them has aged incredibly like a fine cheese. And the other, garbage. Oh shoot, I actually broke it. Oh, I'm so sorry, Horatio the droid. I will give you a proper burial. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at some of the rarest LEGO Star Wars items of all time. Some of these I purchased recently, and others I purchased years ago, and they have inflated in value. But they are all extremely rare. Let's get into it. Why don't we start off our rare expedition with clone troopers everyone's favorite but before we get into them be sure to hit that like button subscribe with notifications on and comment down below there will be a huge giveaway at the end of this video so stay tuned for that and how to enter but we're gonna have some fun today so let's get right on into it first and foremost these are clone troopers who are some of the oldest in all of Lego and that is purely why these guys are rare these came from the first ever clone troopers battle pack and they're pretty common in the sense that a ton of them were printed. However, to find them in good condition, as well as just to purchase them in general, is pretty tough nowadays because a lot of people just hang on to these because of how old they are. First of all, we've got the standard clone trooper right here, and as you can see, it's got the visor indent right there. And same goes for the shock trooper right here. It also came with a 327th trooper, whom I have misplaced. But these guys are pretty rare to find in good condition now. Nowadays. And uh, you know, there's tears to rarity here, and we're starting off slow. But then we're gonna amp it up to 100 with this Kashyyyk Scout Trooper, the very original Kashyyyk Scout Trooper. And we can see that there is a remake of him here. I mean, there's just something beautiful about the OG, but the new one is also nice. This guy right here is uh, pretty darn old, uh, and he might be a little bit older than these guys, to be completely honest. And He's just a rare figure nowadays because of how unique he was. A lot of people coveted these figures and he just really didn't appear in a lot of different Lego sets. So it's a pretty Holy Grail style figure right here. But then of course we moved through the years and we got various different battle packs. We received Utapau troopers here, which are rare because well, they're an older battle pack figure and uh, you know, they're extremely sought after. It was also a time in LEGO Star Wars history where not a ton of people were buying LEGO, and so that really made this figure go up in value a lot. The same can't really be said for these Scout Troopers and Commander Gree. These were more recently available and a lot of them were produced. However, these guys are more rare to find at a cheap price nowadays uh, because, well, people love this Commander Gree figure, so he is highly sought after. And these Scout Troopers right here, also beloved, also highly sought after. Uh, so these guys are pretty rare to find at a good price. But actually rare LEGO minifigures come in the form of this ARC Trooper right here, uh, as well as this ARC Trooper right here. These guys came in the Clone Troopers versus Commando Droids Battle Pack, and not a lot of these were produced, and this one in particular is so expensive because it has so many components. It has the backpack, it has this rare pauldron, it has this, or, or this is the pauldron? No, this is the pauldron and this is the comma. Whichever is the comma and which is the pauldron, I don't remember, but either way, those are pretty rare pieces to find because not a lot of those were produced, uh, plus the antenna and his helmet and his custom legs, and it was just such a detailed and unique and elaborate figure that Lots of people want them, they're not very easy to find, making this one pretty expensive on the list. And this was of course coupled with that battle pack, so he also gets kind of pushed in with this guy because they're almost partners in crime. But then two of the most expensive clone troopers that we have here today are Captain Rex right here. Sadly, I don't have the correct leg printing for him, uh, but even still, this figure only came out in a single Lego set. It was a $30 Lego set. And I just happened to have that Lego set right here sealed. This is the Bark Speeder with Sidecar, an extremely expensive set to find. Includes two new and hard to find minifigures. You got that right, Lego. These are extremely hard to find. <laughs> Captain Rex can be seen in the Sidecar right there, along with another pretty expensive Obi-Wan Kenobi figure right there as well. But of course, Captain Rex being one of the all-time fan favorite characters, 
dollars is just absurdly expensive nowadays and uh, to even find this set sealed well it's a few hundred dollars because not only are you getting a Captain Rex in there you're also getting the whole shebang sealed up you know it's pristine you know it's nice which makes it all that much more expensive and rare but enough about Rexy Poo let's get in to this Wolfpack Trooper right here the Wolfpack an extremely coveted style of clone trooper even though I don't really love the design of this trooper all that much myself uh, these boys are really really expensive and rare to find because of the lacks of sets that they were featured in uh, as well as they're just getting older right now and a lot of people want to build up a wolf pack army so these guys are expensive and hard to find. For our next segment here though I want to talk about some minifigures that I think are going to go up in value considerably but aren't especially expensive right now. 187th troopers of any kind as well as gunner troopers of any kind I think are going to go up in value quite a bit. These are both available currently in sets that are on shelves, but they're really only in a couple of sets, the 187th being in only one. This guy might be in two or three, but still, they're expensive sets. They're hard to find right now, simply because lots of people only own one or two of them. So if you want to buy these in bulk, it's really, really hard. I think these guys are going to go up a lot in the coming years. Then we've got Commander Cody here. He is currently only in one set as well, uh, the ATTE, of course. However, I've heard rumors that he was actually mass printed in Mexico or something like that and sold on like the secondary market in some rogue factory. I don't know if that holds merit, but if so, this guy's going to be a little bit less rare, but still, he's a figure everyone loves, similar to Captain Rex. He's limited in the sets that he is available in, and it's an extremely expensive set. So this guy is rare right now, as it is, and he is going to probably be pretty expensive in the future, unless, of course, the supply chain is just pumped by that rogue factory. And finally, probably the best figure to invest in out of all of these modern ones is this Ahsoka 332nd Trooper. These guys are only available in the AAT. It's a relatively inexpensive set. Uh, however, you only get one of them in the set. And the set wasn't very popular because the AAT wasn't very accurate. So this guy, I expect big things. But speaking of clone troopers who are rare, we have this guy. Yes, you might be thinking, Daily, that is just a standard clone trooper commander. Uh, well, you'd be right and you'd be wrong at the same time. This is actually a misprint, which is what makes it rare. Uh, so if you can't tell, the top of his visor, the paint is misaligned. It shifted to the bottom left. Now, this is actually a fairly common misprint when it comes to these types of figures. However, it's still pretty rare to find any sort of misprints. I recently opened up 10 of the sets with this guy in them, and I didn't find a single misprint. But to purchase one of these misprints cost me about $60. Pretty expensive. I don't really collect misprints either. I just wanted one for this video because these things are extremely rare. You can go through hundreds of clone battle packs and not find a single misprint. So if you have a misprint, hold on to it. And especially if you can get a misprint of like Captain Rex, you're talking thousands of dollars. But this is just a standard clone commander misprint, so a little bit less, but still worth more than you'd expect from this puppy. But how about sealed sets. Sealed old vintage sets are always rare. Most people just go ahead and open them up. This puppy that I got right here, I actually got in a large lot and it didn't say it was sealed. I thought it was open and it turned out to be sealed. The seal is not broken. So pretty rare and amazing find that I found right here, especially because this is from 2007. Yeah, this thing's been unopened for 16 years. That is pretty incredible. We've also got a sealed clone trooper battle pack right here. It comes with two bomb squad troopers, one of the captain lock troopers, and an ARF trooper. Pretty good variety from this battle pack. A very popular one from when I first got into clone army building back in the day, all the way back in 2011. This puppy to come in this good of condition, still sealed, again, is extremely rare to find, and these things, they go for a hefty price. And you kind of have to think about how crazy that is. I mean, these snow trooper battle packs right here that I'm using as a backdrop, these are widely available in all stores, much like how this one was 14 years ago, 12 years ago, 12 years ago, yeah. 
12 years ago. So this thing in 12 years could potentially be worth a lot more. Of course, uh, maybe not because these aren't clone troopers, they're snow troopers and a scout trooper, a little bit less desirable of figures, but I imagine that this $20 set in 12 years will probably be $60 or $70 at the very least. Of course, it's not just sealed battle packs that can be extremely rare and hard to find, but also just vintage sealed sets in general. This puppy right here is the Naboo Swamp set. It comes with four different minifigures, two swamp speeders, and some nice little crustaceans and stuff like that. This is way back when they were still using the Lego system logo. What I like about these the best though is they always gave you alternative build options. So not only could you build the standard set, but they also gave you a unique and creative idea for a completely alternate set. This puppy is all the way back from 1999. I was one years old when this came out and it has managed to stay sealed all that time. Then of course you've got like this from Albertsons for seven dollars. I can tell you I spent more than that. This one is also from 1999, the Lego systems right there. Luke's Land Speeder comes with Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker in a tiny little set for $7. That's something you don't see anymore. That is just rare to even see on modern shelves with modern Lego, that price point and that many figures. And of course, you've got the alternate build here too. Very cool. And last but not least of these mini sets is the Final Duel 2. This is where we do move on from Lego Systems and we have Lego Star Wars right there. Someone scrubbed off the Toys R Us price, but I wish we'd seen it. Actually, that might be KB Toys, it is. 23 pieces, three figures, that is rare. Luke Skywalker, Stormtrooper, and an Imperial Guard. This one's all the way back from 2002 and it was actually a set of mini sets. So you got the throne room, you got the entrance to the throne room and the final duel right there. Pretty incredible to have those little mini series sets come with so many minifigures, something we don't see every day now. And yet again, another sealed set. But then you've got some vintage sealed sets that are just straight up bizarre. How about this Lego Star Wars Technic Super Battle Droid? 381 pieces. It's basically a Bionicle Super Battle Droid. And I thought this was very interesting because of the Star Wars mechs that are apparently coming out. It's very mech-like, although it's more like a Bionicle. Bionicle, I would say. This came out in the same year as that final duel, and you'll actually see scenes from the movie as well as some old 3D modeling they were doing on the backs of these. That's something you really don't see much anymore. And of course, there's some sets I really wish I owned sealed featured on the back. The LAT gunship, that thing is downright expensive now. It's even got <laughs> Lego Jedi Bob right there. That thing sealed would be crazy. Or how about Jango Fett's ship right there? Whew. Another really pricey one. That Jango Fett figure, really rare too. But to find these sets sealed is extremely hard. You have to scour the internet for them and then you have to pay a pretty hefty premium price. But there are some modern sets that you can find that are actually pretty rare and going to be even more rare in the future. I think the best example of one of those sets is going to be the Lars Family Homestead Kitchen. This is from Lego May the 4th last year. It's got Aunt Beru here serving up some coffee. But this thing was extremely exclusive. You could only get it on May the 4th. And uh, I mean, it was pretty hard to find. And nowadays it's actually going for a little bit more than it initially released for and it's only been one year. Normally it takes a few years for sets to go up in price but these exclusive promo sets for May the 4th always go up an absolute ton so I would recommend picking up this year's if you can. We don't know what it is yet but it's likely going to go up in value quite a bit and end up being quite rare so here's my sealed version of this one. And here is some of the poly bags that have also come out on May the 4th that are quite rare. We've got Luke Skywalker with blue milk right there. That's one of the newer ones. And then we got a Rebel A-Wing pilot. This this one is also rather new and uh, not super crazy rare or anything like that, but I thought I'd throw it in here because I had it and it just sort of is a good contradiction to the really rare ones like this puppy, the Chrome Stormtrooper. This guy is really rare, really hard to find. You can tell it is because it's using the old Clone Wars movie decal right there. These guys are absolutely incredible. I love these. And then of course, everyone's fan favorite, the Arf Shadow Trooper. I was lucky enough to buy one of these sealed for about $90 in 2020. This is my second one, I now own two, and this one was a lot more expensive than the one from 2020. Then you got yourself Darth Maul here, an extremely popular figure. Again, limited supply of these, so they're quite rare and quite expensive. This one's interesting, this is TC-14. I always just call him Chrome C. 3PO, but my dog got to this one. Yeah, you might have seen my short about it, but um, 
<laughs> he opened up the package. Luckily, the C-3PO did not get damaged at all. I think it ended up getting tucked in the corner while he was chewing at the top. So, um, even rarer because it has Scout's mouth prints on it. And finally, we have Darth Revan right here. This is an extremely rare figure because it basically hits everything. It's a popular figure. It's extremely old. It's a figure that is exclusive just to this. And it's a figure that they're probably never ever gonna reprint again because Darth Revan is super niche. It's probably not going to end up being in any sets that we ever see. So this thing, this is rare. But these right here, I consider to be the rare poly bags of old. H-E-B, Texas tough. No, what's inside of it? These right here are extremely rare LEGO Star Wars promos. And we're actually gonna crack these open. They actually came in a box, but uh, the seller apparently opened it and shipped it to me without the box. So I figure let's just open it up all the way anyway. So you get yourself three trading cards. You get Chewbacca, Biker Scout, and Biker Scout. And these also came with other ones too. There was like a Darth Vader one. There was like a Bounty Hunter one. This one is the Endor one. These feel really chalky. I mean, these are like... 25 years old, never been opened, so kind of crazy. And you get to go ahead and just stick the cards in here and bend them and ruin them. And then you get the three different figures here as well. These figures alone aren't crazy rare or anything like that. It's just this particular set that they came in that is rare and pretty unique. There's Chewie with his bowcaster. The old school scout trooper with the megaphone blaster. I really love these megaphone blasters. I wish they brought them back. So nostalgic. And there you go. You get a second one of them right there. So yeah, these are pretty hard to find because they were a limited promotional item. They're pretty rare nowadays, especially if you can find the box sealed. That's pretty crazy. But even still, just with the placard and everything in good condition, a very nice pickup. But now I'd say it's time for us to get into some wackier Lego rare items. This right here is rare in the fact that very few of them actually exist. This is a rare custom figure from Venom Paintball, completely custom painted and 3D printed of a Mandalorian right here. These things are mighty expensive. We're talking like $60, and that's because they have to custom paint each individual little marking on them and custom print them all as well. And they are extremely detailed, complete with a magnetic jetpack. It was also Christmas time when I bought this, so they sent us a little Mandalorian Santa hat that you can paint yourself. Very cute. But then we also have artificially rare Lego customs from Republic Bricks. Okay, so he prints a limited number of these every time. So uh, this right here is Anakin. I think he was a one in 25. So there's only 25 of these that supposedly exist. Although I am a little bit suspicious of that. He might just re-release these every time, but supposedly it's rare because only 25 exist. This Obi-Wan I believe is in the same realm, uh, except it's more of a one of 50. So a little bit less rare, but but um, yeah, still, who knows? Then there's this Darth Vader right here, which I actually think is a really crappy figure. Like it's got like three things around its neck. So his head pops way up. The plastic on this is really cheaply made. It feels like a McDonald's toy. I think it was like a one in 10 or something like that. But what makes me really suspicious is the fact that I've bought other figures from him that have this exact same torso. Uh, so clearly parts of this he prints a lot of. And I have a pretty good feeling this is not an actually one of 10. Yeah, so these artificially rare ones, I mean, maybe they truly are rare and he really only prints a select number of them, but I kind of, I kind of doubt it. I don't know, but supposedly rare. Okay, now these rare minifigures are to show that if a set fails, then almost everything inside of it can become extremely rare and extensive. These are all from Assault on Hoth, a really failed set. Not a lot of people really liked it. I built it, it was very mediocre. But these minifigures from it are really expensive. Each of these guys is like 17 to $20, but then you've got this dude right here, Wes Jansen. He is only featured in this set, and he costs $80. Why? <laughs> It's so goofy, but it's literally just because he was only featured in this one set. It didn't sell well, and now it's extremely expensive, as are the rest of these figures, but just a little bit less so. These two figures are other examples of that. There's this weird alien dude right here who only featured in one set. Um, he costs about $40 just because he's a weird little dude. Then there's Ula here, who was a part of Jabba's Palace. She is extremely expensive as well, and she is also... 
uh, one of those inappropriate Lego minifigures because, well, she is, uh, let's say, incarcerated by Jabba for bad things. That he, he, he makes her do bad things. Yeah, I don't want to go further into that or else I might get demonetized. But yeah, random rare figures are everywhere. Quick lightning round of rare figures uh, that I think are going to be worth a lot in the future. The UCS Mace Windu from the UCS Gunship. Any of the Inquisitors, I think, are going to be pretty rare. They're only in expensive sets and uh, people love the Inquisitors. So I think they're going to be rare and expensive. The Mortar Trooper only featured in one set. A really popular trooper. He is beautiful. He's from the Mandalorian. He's pretty rare to find now. I think he is going to get rarer as they disappear into people's collections. And really any sort of named Mandalorian character. Pe the Mandalorian's bussin' right now. People love the Mandalorian. Especially if they are only featured in one set, are going to go up a lot. Even like Moff Gideon, probably gonna be pretty rare in the future. Especially this dude, Gar Saxon. He he is hard to come by right now. He is already expensive and I <laughs> this is gonna easily be a hundred dollar figure, I think. Just won't focus. There we go. Car Saxon for you, ladies and gentlemen. Then, of course, there's some goofier things that are on the rarer side, like this Yoda watch right here that's still sealed. I mean, people bought these, but usually they opened them and uh, they weren't really as popular as just regular Lego sets, so this is kind of hard to find nowadays, especially since it's all the way back from 2010. And in the same vein of niche random Lego-ness uh, is going to be these magnet characters. Uh, yeah, these are also from the Clone Wars era. You got Yoda, you got Dooku, you got Mace Windu, and, and to find this sealed is, is pretty tough as well. It's random, but it's rare because it's random. Now, I really wanted to show off how expensive even a single character can be. This is a pretty non-rare or expensive Lego Leia. It's about $10. It's it's a Hoth Leia. It's not really worth anything. But then you take a step up and you got Endor Leia here, who's about $40 nowadays. Yeah, I mean, a pretty significant jump up. She's got this cool pauldron on, uh, you know, pretty detailed. It's pretty nice. It's a, it's a nice character, $40. But then you've got Bespin Cloud City Leia, the newer one, and, and she goes for about like 80 to 90 dollars. Really detailed, really nice, a, a set that everyone loves, so, you know, it makes sense, makes sense. But then you've got the OG Bespin Cloud City Leia, $200 for a plain, simple Leia. This is absurdly expensive. Yeah, absolutely crazy. So just for Leia's, you have four figures right there, all with a huge range in prices, and they're all the same character. I even weirdly enough have like a extra one of Leia's hair. I found it in, in a bulk pile once, so this is $20. I looked it up online, one sold for $20. Now to finish off this rare escapade, I purchased in my hand here one of, if not the rarest Lego Star Wars minifigure. It's in the top three for most expensive. Can you can you guess what it is? Put put your comments as a guess in, in the in the comment section below. Yeah. It's the Cloud City. Boba Fett. I bought it just for this video. This guy is uh, pretty incredible. It's about $2,000 these days. This one does have a little bit of wear to it. There, there's some nicks on the bottom here. He's a little bit dirty, a little bit grimy, um, you know, some nicks and stuff like that. So, you know, he, he is not the pristine mint condition, but I love him nonetheless. I've always wanted to own one of these in my collection. It is the pinnacle of Lego Star Wars collecting except for maybe like New York Yoda, but nah, I don't really want to own that. I mean, this is a gorgeous figure. And I felt like if I were to make this video and not include a Cloud City Boba Fett in it, then what's the point of the video? You know, this thing is amazing. It only came out in the old school Cloud City. You can identify Cloud City Yodas, or <laughs> Cloud City Bobas by the printing on their arms as well as their legs. That's how you can identify a Cloud City Boba Fett. It's Boba Fett, people love him, it's a rare figure, came out in a set a really long time ago that didn't have a huge print run, so therefore this guy has skyrocketed in price and rarity. Quick shout out to the people who sold him to me, they helped me uh, acquire this Red 5 Trading Company. Check out their eBay store if you want. They'll work with you. They're they're really great guys. Uh, and they also have a YouTube channel, Brick Brigade 99. Shout out to them if you want to go check them out. But yeah, they helped me snag this Cloud City Boba Fett. Uh, so big thank you to them. Uh, and big thank you to you guys watching this video. 
Now let's give you guys something in the giveaway. For today's giveaway, we're gonna be giving away this $60 Lego Clone Commander misprint right here. I think it's a really unique item. It's pretty cool to own a misprint, um, but I want it to go to you guys, and you can say that this came from this video. A rare misprint for y'all. All you gotta do is comment down below what is the rarest Lego item you own. It doesn't have to be crazy expensive, doesn't have to be, you know, even all that rare, just Whatever you own that you think is the rarest, comment it down below in the comment section. And also to enter the giveaway, hit the like button and subscribe with notifications on. Do those three things and you are entered in to win this puppy. Either way guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.